This is Chahaya Furu, one of my favorite series that despite centering around an unknown sport only played in Japan, has some of the most compelling and relatable characters packaged under a genre that I largely dislike and stay away. While the term subtle and delicate conflicts with the stereotypical image of a sports anime or manga, I think that is what makes Chahaya Furu successful. It's a contrast of categories that reintroduces concepts that we're all familiar with in the world of athletics, except it adds a layer of depth from the delicate sensitivity usually found in the best Jose. Hi, I'm Suin. If you're new to this channel, hello, nice to meet you. One of my favorite pastimes of Chinese cartoons is seeing the look of defeat on the characters' faces. Nothing excites my black hole of a heart more than seeing them being decimated by this cruel thing we call life. So why talk about a series that based on the art style is seemingly overflowing with optimism and happiness? Because once in a blue moon, I finally realized that I have ovaries and like to squeal over a certain series that's catered to my gender. Horrifying, isn't it? What initially started out as a curiosity of the sport that is karuta and how it was played, I later stayed for the cast. More specifically, the relationship dynamic of our three main characters, Chihaya, Taichi, and Arata. Between the three, or any of the two, it's their interactions that ultimately sold the show for me, even if the latter's appearances are seldom in comparison. Arata makes his debut as the enigmatic transfer student, a trope that we're all familiar with. However, this initial air of mystery and curiosity among his classmates is quickly forgotten due to his lower socioeconomic status and was the subject of mockery among his classmates. Instead, the role of the popular guy is given to local boy Taichi, the cocky little shit and multi-talented rich kid extraordinaire who everyone fawns over. And Chihaya being situated in between, she naturally balances the two out. As complete opposites the boys may be in both temperament and upbringing, they have one thing in common, and it's their devotion to Chihaya. Sounds like an appending love triangle, doesn't it? The issue the childhood friend cliché can create is its reliance as a time saver, a convenient tool used as a descriptive quality instead of establishing a long-standing connection between said characters that will later become important to the narrative. When done badly, the interactions can come off as hollow, and in worst cases, disingenuous. <laughs> However, between Taichi and Chihaya, it's obvious from the get-go they share a special bond. The playful banter, the habitual amounts of bickering, Taichi lightly bonking Chihaya on the head whenever she makes a goof, and their intense yet friendly rivalry they share in Karuta. These are some mannerisms we share with our closest friends, and this is echoed by how comfortable they are around each other's company. Every interaction comes off as natural without the series chiding you every episode about how close these two are through unnecessary dialogue. With Chihaya, however painfully narrow her thinking is to her detriment at times, it's the internal competition between Taichi and Arata that blurs her relationship with the two. And to say the three's situation is complicated is a bit of an understatement. Chihaya, like Arata's introduction, takes the quintessential premise with a minor twist. Like her male counterparts is this free-spirited, spontaneous, and pure-hearted individual. We know exactly what she's thinking because she wears her heart on her sleeve and her extreme tunnel vision devotion to Karuta demonstrates this. Again, a trope that we're all familiar with, and is only too happy to display her stupidity at times. Though quite dense, it's her innocent charm and unbreakable willpower many find infectious, but can also be a drawback. Over the course of the series, Chihaya has changed the least, her emotional maturity for the most part still very set in that innocent childhood arc in the beginning of the story. And if we quantify the rate of development between the three over the course of the series, she lags behind the others. While the supporting cast has made advancements with even less screen time, Chihaya's straightforward journey towards being the very best in Kodata might be too linear to be a captivating character long term. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, since her inherent cluelessness forces the less important players to pick up the slack, which in turn gives them a chance to shine. Metaphorically, if Chihaya is the illuminating light, then Arata is the dark undercurrent that quietly influenced her actions from behind. One of the more autonomous protagonists, Arata's meekness and ambiguity allows him to act on his own without the camera following him all the time. His number of appearances are comparatively small and lacks the screen time required to be your traditional main character. And for a majority of the time, we learn about him more through the words of others. You could say his purpose is closer to a silent motivator than being in the spotlight. After all, he was the one who gave Chihaya purpose by introducing her to Karuta. So he's doing his job perfectly fine without being physically there as a reminder. 
Arata constantly popping up would have cheapened the value of the trio's encounters, because whenever he is present, it's usually during a crucial moment in the story. To Chihaya, he's more of an abstract concept, a tranquil force who she can look to for advice whenever at a roadblock, beholding him in an almost godlike figure who holds all the answers to her problems. Arata's main appeal is his calm and unassuming nature. His actions are pure and always with kind intentions, even if the receiving end might not interpret it that way. His ability to quickly shrug off feelings of apprehension stems from his confidence in Kodita, and by extension, is what makes him strong in both the sport and as a person. However, in Taichi's eyes, it's a bit sinister. <coughs> Arata is the one who he considers can never be equals with, no matter how hard he tries. Just mentioning his name would drain any remaining confidence and push him into a defensive state, like a constant thorn in his side that refuses to budge. This is the man who is invading his territory encroaching on what he considers his by chipping everything away little by little, and he's powerless to stop it. The real irony here being that the longer Chihaya and Adita are apart, the more their bond seems to strengthen from their desire to see each other in a match, which in turn seems to weaken Taichi's connection to her. But if there is any skill Adita perfected outside of Kodita, it's his uncanny ability in pushing all of Taichi's buttons at the most inconvenient time. With Chahaya being the spotlight and Arata being the gentle current that progresses everything along, finally we have Taichi completing the trio, acting as the linchpin that holds a school club together, and by extension, the entire series. Up until much later in the manga, he was arguably the most important and complex character, despite the series title partially bearing someone else's name. So that's why I proposed that from this day forward, the name Chahaya Furu be replaced with the more appropriate title, Taichi Furu. His progression from general aloofness to going all out for Kodita is one of the most well-developed character arcs I've seen. To his peers, he is the voice of reason and the anchor of common sense to Chihaya, the understanding, smart, and charismatic leader people naturally gravitate towards. AKA, the exact opposite to Chihaya. <laughs> but no matter how much of a model student he may seem, we later learn of his guarded nature and self-defeatist attitude and it's these imperfections that makes him sympathetic to us. Taichi is a compelling character not from being the underdog of the trio, but because he feels the most human out of anyone else. In other words, the unpleasant side of us. We see him become anxious, get territorial, doubt his integrity as a friend to both Chihaya and Adita by choosing to act behind their backs. The uglier side of human nature we get to witness. His honest feelings are open to the viewer alone, sharing his innermost agony and aspirations exclusively to the audience that the cast, unless told, must figure out for themselves. And it's these tidbits of intimate info that contextualizes his behavior and justifications behind them. Comparatively, Taichi is the more calculated one out of the bunch, which is why he can come across as manipulative and fake to some because of how overly cautious he is of the others around him. Too tactful, too mindful, too artificial, some could say. But his best moments, arguably, are the ones when he temporarily lets go of his insecurities and acts selfishly on his behalf, because we see glimpses of the type of person he's capable of becoming. Whereas most of the central cast are readable like an open book, Taichi protects himself in a wall constructed years of quiet resentment and what he deems his cowardice and falsity. Despite being talented in a multitude of subjects, he admirably chooses to fight the uphill battle in a sport that he isn't naturally good at, but his rivals excel in. And the real strength in his characterization is persuading the viewer to cheer him on, despite being this seemingly perfect human being with a privileged upbringing. Whereas these two come from humble backgrounds with adversities that is easier to sympathize with. Unlike Chihaya and Adita who simply wants to be number one in Kodita, Taichi's goals are less tangible because he views the game as a pathway to change an evolution into someone who he can be proud of, a more truthful individual to himself and to others born from his actions and determined by him alone. But the problem is that the person who he wants to show that to the most doesn't see it, nor seems to display any long-term signs of realizing it. Jahaya's line of reasoning stems entirely from Kodita, so it's no wonder Taichi fosters some frustration since not everything can be resolved or viewed from a lens of a card game. Throughout his journey, we learn just how burdensome Taichi's situation is and he lets on. He's running on limited time, 
accelerated by his pressuring mother who influenced an unhealthy upbringing of only enrolling him in activities that he will excel in. But the underlying tragedy in the series is not the overbearing parent or the self-imposed high expectations, but Chahaya herself. Taichi's objectives are tied to her feelings and everyone, and I mean everyone, is aware of this except for her. Which is hilariously ironic, because the childhood friend who we assume knows each other the most is the one who understands him the least, to the extent that even minor acquaintances are more observant of his behavior than her. Due to this, the Karuta Club show consistent signs of gratitude for his leadership and sacrifices that offsets her frequently misguided decisions. Because ultimately, Chahaya is a hypocrite. A kind-hearted one with good intentions with a plausible theory of being dropped in the head as a kid, but a hypocrite nonetheless. She wants Tai Chi to be at her side at all times, but only at a comfortable distance where she can easily turn to him for consolation. She wants his unconditional support but doesn't reciprocate said feelings, so she has a tendency to come off as selfish and even inconsiderate. But even with the one-sided exchanges, the bottom line remains is that Chihaya, Taichi, and Arata are ultimately good people. It's clear they treasure their friendship and want nothing more than the best for each other, and their bond runs deep beyond their shared experiences through playing Karuta. Chihaya Furu, as the name translates, is an anime about passion. Whether it's showing said devotion to the person who matters to them the most, or immediately taking on the lofty ambitions of being the best, each character has their own reason as to why they play the sport, but all are united under a dedication to it. Jahayafuru is great not for the existence of a love triangle, but by using it as a framework to create an emotionally rich and textured cast beyond the expected feelings of romance. It's a beautifully sensitive narrative about testing long-lasting friendships. And of course, fostering an evergreen love for what you wish to pursue, despite the setbacks that come with it. As my hair becomes grayer and my optimism dwindles with age, I look back and my appreciation for the series deepens as it reconnects me to the good old days. Days that felt less hectic, and the worries from today would all go away just doing what you love, temporarily frozen in time. But if there's any overarching message that I think Chihayafuru really hits home, it's that the world becomes a lot grey and ugly as we get older. Things aren't so black and white as we believed it to be when we're young. And the time to enjoy life with friends is limited, and it's up to us to make the best of it with the little chances we get.